And that bleeds into our segment because we talked about Jackson Arnold. We talked about um, Arch Manning, those two, but those aren't the starting quarterbacks. Jackson Arnold was a starter, but Quinn, he was the starter. And I don't know if anyone caught this. At 11 p.m. Eastern time today, I'm texting with Mark. I didn't even know this. I was at work. He texted me and said, hey, you may want to talk about this. Parker Thune, who covers Oklahoma and does a good job. I respect him. He does a really good job, has way more clout than me. I hoped on um, at some point to be on the stage that Parker Thune's at. He does a fantastic job. But he said Oklahoma has a better roster than Texas. My response to Mark on that was he should be drug tested. Because the, no, they don't. No, in no world does Oklahoma have a better roster in Texas. No world. By the way, this is how I know he's wrong on this, guys. If I go to Lindy's, which I have upstairs, Texas is ranked ahead of Oklahoma and everything. They're be- Or not everything, I shouldn't say that. They're ranked ahead of Oklahoma. People think they're going to have a better year. If you check Phil Steele's magazine, by the way, I didn't know this. Mark told me this as well. He has Oklahoma ranked as the seventh best team in the country. Guess what? He still has Texas ahead of him. If you look at the composite at 247, team talent roster, Texas has a more talented roster. Literally anywhere you go, Texas is better. Anywhere. If you want to ask anyone, Texas has a better roster. Everyone except one guy, an Oklahoma fan. So who am I going to trust? Am I going to trust everybody, the 99% that have little to no affiliation with Texas and say they have a better roster? I'm going to trust the one guy over here with Oklahoma that says Oklahoma has a better roster. Texas has a better roster, and we're going to break this down. We're going to talk about it. Are there certain position groups that are better at Oklahoma than I thought they were? Absolutely. There's a couple of position groups I would trade with Oklahoma. But as a roster and depth-wise, this is not close. It is not close, guys. It's not. And my issue is be realistic because you're selling your fans a load of crap is what you're doing. What's going to happen is you've built these expectations now. They're going to say, hey, we should win nine or 10 games. No, you shouldn't. No, you shouldn't. Guess who doesn't think that as well? Las Vegas. They have the over-under set at seven and a half, and they have that set a good for reason. Yes, as he pointed out, Oklahoma has a better schedule than Texas. No doubt. SEC schedules harder by two games. I think uh, there's two games on there that, uh, that are harder. What I mean by that, okay, so Texas has – I'm thinking three to four, four hard SEC games. I think Oklahoma has six. I think there's a two-game difference there. Um, So do they have a harder schedule? Yes. But it's not that much harder to where I think Texas is going to win 10 games. If Oklahoma is a better team than Texas, Oklahoma should win nine games this year. They should win nine games, period. You can be one game less with the harder schedule. You cannot be eight and four and sell me the load of BS that you're better than us. If If they go eight and four, and we go 10 and 2, and that's your schedule. We are better than you. You're not two game two games difference is not a like schedule. If you're really like the seventh best team in the country, like Phil Steele says, you should win eight at least eight games with that schedule. At least. At least. You should be between eight and ten wins. And that's not they're gonna win at most eight games. I'm telling people that right now. Oklahoma's a gonna have a solid first season in the SEC. I think they're a seven or eight win team. They're not nine or ten wins. They're just not. And we're going to dive deep into that in a second. Are we talking softball? Yeah, they might They might be talking softball. I don't know. We've gone back in time and Baker, Mayfield, Baker Mayfield is back in OU. Baby, <laughs> shake and bake. Yeah, apparently I'm, they've just gone. What they have is the all-time team versus this tech team. They got Baker Mayfield, Billy Sims. Um, Joe Mixon, C.D. Lamb, Marquise Brown. They have all those guys, and we have this team. That's what they have, apparently. Um, I'm glad he's at my Bucks. I didn't even know your Buccaneers fan. Yeah, he's he was solid, and they re-signed him, which I thought was smart. I, it, it's just crazy, and we'll jump into it in a second. I want to get through your guys' comments. Arch Manning went to a Vipers text tonight. I agree. Not enough sample size. That's why this is 100% a fun segment, um, John. Just wanted to get the opinions of other people as well. So it's going to be interesting. Ewers should be preseason Heisman watch. Is it okay? Is Oklahoma's QB in that conversation? Absolutely. I mean, is he in that conversation? Yeah, he's probably in the top. I bet if he – I don't know Heisman odds. I know Quinn Ewers is first or second. Jackson Arnold's probably like 15th, honestly, because it's mostly quarterback. So he's probably like 15th, something like that. I could be wrong. I think he could be higher. He's probably, if I had to guess, somewhere between 8 and 15. Clearly depends on if the SE allows OU to continue to hold and tackle every play. 
yeah, we can talk about that. Um, you were in the conversation. Absolutely, John. Uh, I was shocked when Mark ranked Quinn the number one quarterback in the country. I wouldn't go that far. I think, like I said, you can debate. I guess I would. I, you can debate Carson Beck and Quinn Ewers. That is a 100% of debate. I think those are the two best quarterbacks in the country. It's hard for me when I ranked quarterback rooms. I ranked Texas above Georgia only because of Arch Manning. I thought those two guys were even. Then when we went to backup, I went with Arch Manning over Georgia's backup. So, there's a debate there, 100. percent I don't. If someone would say Carson Beck is the best quarterback in the country, go ahead and say that. I have no issue. Anyone else, honestly, I wouldn't debate with. I think those are the two best quarterbacks. But let's we'll run through these real quickly. I couldn't put together enough in time to go super in depth on this. But to be fair on this, there's some I'm going to agree. Oklahoma's better at. But a quarterback, like I said, seven games for Jackson Arnold. 63.8% completion uh, percentage, four touchdowns, three interceptions. And this, I was nice on this, guys. By the way, I did this. I took Quinn Ewers and did his average. I didn't take his first year or his second year, which his second year was much better. I averaged out his first year and his second year, and this is his uh, statistics. 64.3% averaged out between the two years. 2,828 yards, 8.2 yards per attempt, so they're even there. Quinn's a little bit better completion percentage-wise. 18 touchdowns, 6 interceptions. So, honestly, Jackson Arnold might be able to equal those touchdowns. His interceptions would be way higher, though, if he played a whole season. And this is what I'm talking about, because Quinn Ewers took a gigantic jump. So, between year one and year two, 11% completion percentage jump, 7 more touchdowns, and 1.4 yards more per attempt. So, I was kind in averaging out year one and year two. There's no debate here. Quinn Ewers is a better quarterback than um, Jackson Arnold. So, that's one point for Texas right there. I'm just going to tally this up into points. Uh, SEC running back rooms. I already ranked these guys. I had Texas as the number one ranked SEC running back room. Even if you disagree, the lowest you could possibly go is four. That is the lowest you could go. Um, and it's Jane Blue, Cedric Baxter. Jane Blue averaged 6.1 yards per carry. Cedric Baxter, 4.8. In his freshman year with 659 yards. Javante Barnes, who returns to them, got hurt. He always gets hurt. He played in seven games last year, only averaged 3.8 yards per carry. Gavin Sawchuk did have a good year, 6.2 yards per carry and nine touchdowns. And then you have Taylor Tatum with the number one running back um, in the country coming in out of high school. Not enough production. We have two guys right there. Plus, fine, you have the number one running back in the high, high school coming out. We have Jarrett Gibson, the fourth best running back. We have Christian Clark, the 20th best running back. We have Trey Weisner, who will come in and get good carries. We, have, we go five deep at running back. They go at most three. And if Javante Barnes gets hurt again, you have two guys. You have two guys, and one of them in Gavin Saw or um, yeah, Gavin Sawchuck is okay. He was like their fourth string running back last year until people weren't performing or got hurt, and he had to step in. Texas wins this running back room. Even if you want to knock us down, like I said, I have his first in the SEC running back room. Knock us down to fourth. I have Oklahoma ninth. Hell, I'll bump him up to sixth. We're still better than you. That's two o Texas. Wide receiver room, this is close. If you want to debate this till the cows come home, you can do that. Texas, I have is the third best running room, uh, wide receiver room in the SEC. Like I, we, did, we did this last week. You can go check out the video on the SEC channel. Um, I have Oklahoma as fourth. So they're right there. I'll give you give us each a point. It's three to one. Three to one. This is where it isn't close, and people need to realize this. Offensive line, we have four out of five returning offensive linemen. Anyone want to venture a guess how many offensive linemen returned for Oklahoma? I'll wait a minute. I'll jump into your comments, and I'll take some guesses, too. Um, and did you play any non-conference team like viewers? True. Um, Blue was the top running back in the nation as junior. Yes, people forget about that. Then he set out his senior year and dropped. Cedric Baxter and Jaden Blue, if Jaden Blue plays a senior year in high school, are back-to-back -back number one running backs in the country. Corey Peacock, thank you. They have zero returning offensive linemen. Zero. And all I'm going to hear is, well, we got this guy from North Texas who was an all-freshman. That was North Texas. Congratulations. Do you want a cookie? You have zero. Zero returning. You have Jacob Sexton, who was a highly rated player coming in um, a couple years ago. He will start. I do like him. I think he's going to be a good player. Um, let's see. You have Troy Everett. He played in nine games last year. Okay. You play, have Spencer Brown. This is probably your best offensive lineman. He transferred in from Michigan State. I believe he's a fifth or sixth year senior. 
I, I do like him. Then you have Gary and Hatchett who played at Washington. He started four games. There's a reason he only started four games. Basically what you did is you tipped the best, the fifth or seventh, the, one of the sixth or seventh best offensive linemen from these teams and brought him for you to start. Other than the guy that transferred from North Texas, Fabici Newton. He was good. We'll see if it translates to the SEC. But every one of these guys was a rotational player that couldn't start for a reason. And now they're supposed to start the whole season for Oklahoma. That ain't happening. So I I just don't understand this. Texas wins that. It's 4-1. to one. I will say, when we get to defense, which we won a second, it is much closer there. It is much closer there. Offense, it is not close. Our offense is way better than Oklahoma's, and it's going to be for a while because we could, we recruit the quarterback position a little bit better than them. And also, offensive line right now, we're recruiting better. That, with this class, that could but obviously change. It could definitely change. If we snag Davidson and Marsh, it's a wrap. That would be um, a good snag for you guys, Marsh. I know he visited Texas a couple weeks ago. Or was it last week? Yeah, it was last week, Andrew Marsh. Yeah, I think you guys end up with him, Moose. Um, didn't Bradford get hurt when Oklahoma non uh, experience online, it could happen again. That is a very good point, James. That is a possibility. Let's go to defensive ends. And by, by the way, let's say this. I'll give them props here. 79% of returning production for Oklahoma. Guess what? You were 49th in the country in points against in the 77th defense overall. So is that a good thing that you're returning that, that much production? Is it? We'll see. Defensive ends. Ethan Burke, Baron Sorrell, Colin Simmons, Trey Moore, Colton Vasek, Justice Finkley. We wiped them out of the water on this. This is not close. Our defensive ends are probably the best. It is. It's the 100% strength of the defense. They have Ethan Downs, Trace Ford, who is a linebacker converted to a defensive end now. He did play a little bit of defensive end at Oklahoma State, but he's not that good. Um, I mean, that's think about that. That's your second best defensive end, guys. That's your, He would be the – he's not better than Ethan Burke. He's not better than Baron Sorrell. He's not better than Colin Simmons. He's not better than Trey Moore. He'd probably be our fifth string defensive end at best. And he's going to start for you guys most likely. Or be the backup. Either one. He's going to get a lot of playing time. He would not touch the field very much at Texas. Defensive ends, Texas wins this. So what are we up to, guys? We're up to 5-1 to one points wise. And I don't think this can really be debated. If you, if you guys want to debate this or know anyone that wants to debate it, we can debate it. Defensive tackles, you do win here. Much better here. I... Talent-wise, I think depth-wise, we are better here uh, with Jermaine Lillet, who we stole from you, by the way. Um, and then we also have Bill Norton, Tia Sevilla, Ver Vernon Broughton, Alfred Collins, those guys. If Alfred Collins could play up to his potential, I think you could make a case for Texas here. But Dominic Williams has played his, to his potential. Davis Stone is highly recruited, really good player coming out of high school. Deshaun Terry was really good for them last year. Um so I, I I do think at defensive tackle Oklahoma is better. So it's five to two. Now if Alfred Collins has a really good season and takes that next step forward, they're not, and this would be six to one. But five to two. Next up, you're going to win another one. Linebacker, Danny Stutzman and Kip Lewis are a hell of a combination. Hell of a combination. Danny Stutzman's a really good player. Again, this basically teeters on one player for Texas. If Anthony Hill can be the guy who we think he can be, I think we have a better linebacker core than they do with him, Benda, Blacko, Liano, LaFau. But I've seen Danny Stutzman at his best. I have not seen Anthony Hill at his best. I think Anthony Hill will be a way better player than Danny Stutzman when he does reach his poten uh, full potential. But right now he's not. So I will give Oklahoma that. It is five to three, guys. So it, they have closed it. And this is where we extend the lead for Texas a little bit more. The cornerback position, not close. This Oklahoma secondary last year was terrible. One of the worst in the country. They got torched through the air when they played good offenses. Oklahoma State and Texas killed them. These guys commit penalties. They don't create turnovers. They're not good cornerbacks. You have Woody Washington, Makari Vickers, Gentry Williams, who I do like, and Kanai Walker. Manny Muhammad would be by far the best cornerback on Oklahoma. He's the best cornerback at Texas. I think Javion Cole would be the best cornerback at Oklahoma. I think Gavin Holmes would probably be the second best cornerback at Oklahoma. He's our third, maybe even fourth best cornerback by the end of the season. Texas wins this six to three. Um, also, I didn't even throw Jade Bear in there at the nickelback position or Jalen Gilbo, who would definitely start at Oklahoma, but we don't need to do that. Safety is a little bit closer. I do like Billy Bowman. I do like Peyton Bowen. I think if we're going 
top end here, those two versus our best two, I might take Oklahoma. If we're going depth, I would take Texas. Um, It's hard because I – you know what? We'll call it a draw. I've given two draws. I think I think this one in the wide receiver room are you can completely, completely argue either way. Um, there's some other rooms in here you can completely argue either way, but I think those are the closest two in my opinion. So tie, so that's two ties. So with most rooms going to Texas and a couple ties in there, I have seven points for Texas and four points for Oklahoma. On top of when you go to 247, who has the better roster? Texas. When you go to Phil Steele, who does this for a living? And I think he's overrating Oklahoma at seventh, but I think he has Texas at two or three, maybe even four. Guess what? Still better in Oklahoma. Lindy's has Texas better. Athon has Texas better. Everyone and their mother has Texas better. But, you know, debate with a wall, I guess. Oklahoma apparently is better. Um, Bowman is a player. 100% Oklahoma, Oklahoma has good players. There's no debate about that. Oklahoma, I think, will probably be the 12th to 18th best team in the country. They are not – the seventh best team in the country, like Phil still thinks, they are not better than Texas. They will not be better than Texas. They weren't better in Texas last year. Did they beat Texas? Absolutely, they did. But that's a one-game sample size. Over the season, Texas was a better football team. Um, special teams, yeah, I didn't rank that. I think it's about even, honestly. I think kicker-wise, it's even. Texas does have a freshman punter. I have no idea who punts the ball for Oklahoma. If you want to give them that, fine. But it's still 7-5. to five. That would still make Texas the winner. Um, so I have Texas winning. I hope Texas beats the crap out of Oklahoma this year now because of all, all the stuff he said, honestly. Um, we'll see if it happens. Is by the way, here's this. To say I'm not objective, because I'm sure when this is clipped and put on here, it's going to get a lot of views. Oklahoma is a better football team than Texas all the time. They are. They're a better program. They're probably the second or third best program in the history of college football. They are not better than Texas this year. They don't have more talent. They don't, they aren't better on offensive line in the trenches where it matters. They aren't better at the quarterback position, the most important position in sports. The only debate you have is the interior of the defensive line. The defensive ends is not close. Texas is way better at defensive end. Colton Vosick, who would be our fifth guy, most likely, maybe fourth if he has a really good year, um, would start for you. We are better than Oklahoma this year, and we will be better than Oklahoma. And in October, I hope we beat the crap out of them.